Welcome back to Beauty Marks Podcast. My name is Elizabeth Javion and welcome back to another episode. Today we're actually just going to have a chill conversation, but it is controversial. I'm actually here today with my coffee, if you can hear it. And it's so funny because anyone that drinks coffee or iced coffee can relate to doing that so many times over and over. I don't know why we do it. So a lot of this stuff is definitely controversial and I know different people have different views, but I did ask on Instagram what are expectations or a standard for a woman in the Latino culture and I had some great responses, so I am going to be talking about those and then I'll be sharing some things that I've personally dealt with. So first of all, I personally am a second generation Latina. My parents were born in a different country and came here in their 20s. So they were actually born in Honduras. They came directly to Miami. And so all of that definitely has a play on like even my parents' mentality because what we have to think about is that when people have expectations, where do they come from? They come usually from their parents. So like our grandparents would which were raised in a different time, in a different country, in a different normal um, than us. And then once people move here, it's like there's already customs and everything here in in, um, the United States, and it's trying to merge the culture. And then if we even add on the religious belief someone has, that all is like trying to figure out a compromise, you know, for everyone. So even now, I look at a lot of things that, you know, the new generations are, are, you know, anyone born after the 2000s. And I'm just like, oh my God, like, how is that normal? But it's because I wasn't raised that way. So overall, I'm just going to go through the list. However, I know that everybody's different and there are some things that if you and your spouse or you in your household have different standards or want to live in a certain way or are okay with certain things, of course, it's not a problem. So the first thing was about um, knowing how to cook, of course. We all know that, you know, our parents cooking or our grandparents cooking is amazing. And specifically in the Hispanic culture, um, food is a way of showing love um, to the people that we have around us. So when I go to my grandma's house or when I go to um, certain family members' house, they want to serve you. And of course, some people genuinely like how to cook. So that's like an essential, like everybody should know how to cook. However, in my in my family i actually had to learn how to cook especially when i moved out of the house because that was something that because my mom um was mostly working and we grew up just like a really busy lifestyle so at least for me personally it wasn't like sat down and my mom made food she mostly just picked up something you know it was mostly like takeout so as an adult now i've had to learn how to cook and um just kind of prioritize that because I know it's healthier and I know that I want to be able to cook for my family. So I've asked even friends to teach me certain things to cook. The second thing that was common was about dedicating yourself to being a housewife and have kids. So this is especially normal because most Hispanic families have a lot of kids and a lot of people in them. And so it is common to see um, people, you know, that have a lot of cousins, that have a lot of aunts and uncles. Like I know that I have different family members all over in different countries and different states that I don't even know. This is something though that when it comes to having kids, I know now I've even told my parents, I know that I would like them, but I don't know when that's going to be. And at the end of the day, that's not such a priority like it was in their generation so now when it comes to working from home or being able to be you know a housewife and like take care of the house or the kids all those things are now I feel like people decide to do those things if they want to like if they make the arrangement with their partner and then even the kids a lot of people are getting married a little later and then they're having kids in their 30s if that's something that they want to do so I've spoken to a lot of people that have been married and they are enjoying their time you know to themselves and it doesn't mean that they're not going to have them it just means that they will when they want to but it is definitely something that is asked about so much um, when it comes to when you go to parties when you go to um, occasions with your family I see so many people being like okay so now what like so now when are the kids when are when is this like it's always like the next thing um the third thing is about moving out of your house 
when you're married or staying close to home when you move out. So this is something that I can very much relate to because I actually moved out of my house not being married. I have an older sister and a younger sister and my older sister moved out of the house at 24, got married and moved into an apartment with her husband. When it came to me, it was such a shocker because no one thought I was going to do it and I had never really like spoken about it until like that year. Like I had always wondered like hmm, I wonder how it would be like if I was to move out but I didn't know it was going to be like that. Like I thought it, it was going to be exactly like how my sister was. So my story was a little different. When I was 21, I decided to move out um, into an apartment with a roommate closer to my college. I was actually in my senior year. So in my second to last semester, which was really shocking because um, I didn't even have like a full-time job. I had two part-time jobs at the po- at the moment. And then my parents always thought like for me to move out of the house, it was going to be because I got married, you know, and that was just what people do. Like, you know, why would you want to move out of the house? You know, everything's here, you know, you don't have a problem. So that was something that I definitely had to work through with my family because everybody was very opposed to it because they thought I wasn't ready and they didn't understand why. I'm very glad that I did it because now I have such a bigger outlook on, you know, the demand and the responsibility of moving on your own, um, the budgeting, a lot of things that I wouldn't have learned, me being comfortable at home. And then on the other side, um, I've heard of when people say moving to a different city, moving to a different country, moving away from your family can be very difficult, especially if you're very close. Um, It does feel like you're abandoning or that's how your family might see it as like you're abandoning them. They make you feel a little guilty for doing that, even though I know the intention of when those things are done is when people are, you know, chasing opportunities, trying to grow in their field or trying to do something new. You know, this is the opportunity that we have. If you have that option to be able to really you know, pursue your dreams. I have a friend that actually moved across the country. She decided to take a leap of faith and moved across the country to California. And I'm so very happy for her because that was something always that she wanted to do. And this is the perfect time. She doesn't have any serious attachments when it comes to that, just family. And, um, but she's, you know, chasing her dreams and she knows that's where she wants to go. Those are things that can be difficult to work through, but they're possible to work through. So it's just understanding on both sides, like kind of affirming your parents that you know they're not losing you fully and them understanding that you're growing and you're doing things for also your future the fourth thing that kind of ties in there was a lot of these um little comments but it was about dealing with cheating um how to cater to a man so he won't leave you which i thought was really interesting and um taking care of a man when it comes to all his needs like submitting to him Overall, that is something that we definitely see in other countries that happens very often. I know that happens everywhere, you know, however, that those things, I feel like growing up hearing that that happens is you end up kind of normalizing it and you think that at the end of the day, that's going to happen and that's just how men are and that's just how it is in our culture when no, there are good men that at the end of the day, that's not their character and that's not their morals and at the end of the day, when it comes to how to catering yourself or making yourself for a man like so that he won't leave you at the end of the day there's really nothing that you can do in reality so that someone won't leave you like if they're going to leave you if they're going to do something they're going to do it regardless no matter if you are the perfect person um, for them because that's more an internal thing for them not because of you growing up and hearing that you definitely have to switch your thought process you know what I mean and more of like understanding the value that you have so it's more of like affirming girls from a young age to let them know like there's nothing wrong with you like you know like you have value and you and you at the end of the day there's things that you do have to tolerate And there's things that you don't, but that's up to you. Like, you don't have to do anything. And then when it comes to taking care of your man, you know, you taking care of the person that's mutual. It's not just you taking care of them. It's just more of a mutual respect. And again, all these roles and all these things, I feel like 
in today's day and age like you can talk about these things like maybe my parents or my grandparents um they used to tell me like you know this is how it is like you need to if you need to cook if you want to find a man you need to learn how to cook like my, things my grandma used to tell me something else is about getting a professional career so like as a woman like making sure to have your own um, which is very important because i know some people again choose to have someone take care of them or like you know that's their goal like that they want to be um a stay-at-home mom um however i know that's not for everyone and i know that a lot of people end up having a career and doing the wife role the mom role they do a lot of they wear a lot of hats and so when it comes to this i definitely know that especially if your parents got a degree in their country or they have a standard you know for you and they just want you to be successful and so that standard of like you know doctor lawyer like accountant like i'm pretty sure so many people have been told by their parents to do like one of those things um however the main thing is about getting a job you know making sure that you have a secure income you know that you're not depending off of anybody else which is actually a really good thing you know however now in 2020 you can do a lot of things from home you have you can have your own business you know you can do something creative so it's just opening that mentality of like you know we can make money in other ways not just like those big you know jobs of what our parents would think would bring the most money the next thing is how latina should look so like being presentable and all of that and like the standard of what colors to wear they would say like you know wear more colors or like you know like make sure to put your makeup on make sure to do your hair like that was something that um our parents have instilled in us to like take care of ourselves but something that someone wrote that i thought was really interesting was about the type of body that you should have so upkeeping your body to be curvy and to like be more sexy and um i thought that was interesting because it is true that like we have more of a pressure of you know make sure this goes back to taking care of your man and how you should look and like and you know who cares about even though you have all these other things about you like your appearances matter so much and um that is a pressure that we feel you know but i personally don't believe that that's all a woman is you know especially in our in our culture um there are a lot of women that wear a lot of hats and have so much potential with what they're doing um you know they're ceos they're um entrepreneurs they're you know, in school, they're doing different things and that, and that is accounted for. Um, At least if you feel the pressure that those are the body type stereotypes that you should have. At the end of the day, no woman looks alike. Even if you're not Latina in any other culture and any other um, race, no person looks alike. So that pressure of like trying to be in a certain way, like, no, we ain't going to do it. The next thing is about getting married and having kids before 30. So that is definitely something that I can relate to because I don't know how many times as close when I was like 17, I told myself that if by 25, I was not married, I would literally figure out like go on a dating app or like go do something crazy, like marry just anybody (laughs) because I thought that at that point, which I know is crazy thinking about it now, but at that point, that was like such an end goal and that seems so realistic that I was going to get married by 25. And now that I'm already getting there, I'm like, yeah, that's not going to happen. So now it's the push to 30. And I feel like that's so ingrained in us that we think that there's so much more value when you get married versus you being single when if we see it that way then we are in a way always gonna feel like until i get this then i'll be good when in reality if you want a life partner if you want someone to you know get married if that's something that you want to do or have kids that will come eventually and i know that people say that but i know that it's true like that will come eventually in your time but imagine the time if you spend all your time your years of you know being single or like not having that because even if people that are in relationships and maybe they're not married yet or maybe they don't have kids yet if you like dread you miss out on the season that you're in now like in the, the moment that you are in right now that's something that as much as you will receive pressure just knowing that that's because they probably got married at that age they probably got married super young had kids super young and that's the life that they chose for themselves. And at the end of the day, I know many people that got married 
over 30 that got had kids over 35 and i know for women it's different like we do have a biological clock and there are higher risk at a certain age but that doesn't mean that you're hopeless if you don't have it by a certain age something that i remember going on vacation i was like you know just having a really good time and someone asked me like how old i was and i was like oh i think i was like 22 at the time or maybe 21 and they're like oh like you're having you're almost there to 25 like you know like you know men are different like men like in their 30s like they can go and marry a 21 year old a 24 year old but men don't want a an old woman and i'm just like looking at them like okay ouch like thanks for telling me that you know like what am i supposed to do with that information and that just goes to show that yes that's part of some people's life if they choose that and they want that but it is not and you do not expire you're not like milk that just expires and has an expiration date like oh if you don't make it past 25 and when we're younger we say all these things and we have all these dates but usually our little deadlines just move over you know like move over because things happen in life and um that's something that no matter in what stage you are in life i know it can mess you up or it can affect you mentally to be like oh man like is there something wrong with you even i tell myself this there's nothing wrong with you you are in the perfect spot that you are in because that is the journey for you that is the path for you if you were supposed to have kids or be married by a certain age you would you know so all those pressures that you have and if you need to you know let those people know like please don't tell me those things anymore then do so but that's just again because they probably experienced that at an earlier age so they feel like they're just watching out for you some other things that were said um were marrying within your own race so you know if you're colombian you marrying someone either hispanic or even some people are even to the point that they want you to marry from someone from your own country so like even though you're hispanic they want you it's not the same you know because there are differences within our own people you know that you know depending on where you were born what what part of the country if you are more americanized per how people say all those things can play a part however it is great how we are today that there are a lot of people that do marry you know outside of the race a lot of my close friends did marry either outside of the race or you know someone from another culture and, and all that and i think that's beautiful you learn so much and you have just a different dynamic you know you can speak spanish and and if that's important to you or you can teach the other person to speak spanish um that was something else that um, people said was about speaking spanish so that it, this expectation is that you need to speak spanish all the time which is like a good thing i feel like having two languages is a blessing like i am so thankful to be latina and just to have that you know there was a, a time in my life where i was embarrassed of being hispanic and now i'm like no i own it i'm like nope i speak two languages and i am proud of it and i'm proud from where my parents came from i'm proud of my my um, heritage and i'm proud of all of that i think that comes with just growing up and then another thing was about being um wearing a white dress for your wedding which is funny but um you know not wearing an off-white like you know that's more like a traditional standard like expectation um when you get married and then also being like the strong women within your family so like being super strong there was some other people that thought that women need to be more submissive and there's other people that think that women are the stronger role in the family like they're the ones that have more of a voice compared to the man so all of these things, again, are just more a little bit of controversial. I know people have different views on them, but maybe you have heard or you can relate to one or a few of them that have been said to you or you have heard over the years. Um, just because these standards don't define anything, to be honest, they're just more of because they were standards back in the day or they still are just the way that the world works, you know, and I know it at the end of the day everybody gets to choose and decide what they want to do and how they want to live but if you are in one of those positions where you feel like you're not meeting up to quote unquote the standards just know you are not alone and at the end of the day these are just things that people say but don't let that put you down you know like we have a great culture embrace being latina embrace wherever you're at even if girl you can't cook even if you don't got a man even if all these things you know like just understand that it doesn't make you less of 
a Latina or less of a woman for those things. So just wanted to encourage you guys today and just have a talk, to be honest. I thought this was an interesting topic. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for tuning in and make sure to subscribe to this podcast and follow me at Elizabeth Savvy. I will see you next week.